Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bobble Podcast. My name is Manny. I'm the CEO of Bobble Digital. I'm Claire Daniels, CEO of Trio Media. I'm Anushna Tekanya, CEO of Burnwee. So welcome back. I know we've been a little quiet in terms of our content, but that's because we've been taking this time out to reflect on the feedback from all our listeners. Um, we've got a new uh, set of series of podcasts that we're going to be launching out as limited series, which will hopefully be able to provide you with more content in a shorter um, audio session so you can get more value quicker and learn through a journey with us as we go through the what, why, how, and the summary of everything we discussed. Um, in today's topic of um, our podcast, we're going to be talking about websites. So just to give a bit of an intro, you know, websites now more than ever are more valuable to your business. Since the lockdown and the pandemic, a lot of businesses had to reevaluate their online presence and a lot of businesses realized that their online presence wasn't up to scratch and then thus had to invest a lot into it, whether they were e-commerce, B2B. The only way people could get in contact with them was via online methods and the only way they could communicate what they do and how they're helping and supporting local communities and what they offer as a business was through their online website. So with that, we're going to be doing a what, why, how series about websites and um, what is going to be looking at well what is a website what you should be doing with your website why is it all about you know why you should be implementing certain software certain techniques and marketing strategies to support your website and then how do you go about doing that and then we'll do a nice quick summary so we're going to start off today with the first episode which is you know what is websites what do you need for your website what is your website meant to do and support on and we'll kick it off so claire anush yeah, what do we well, think I think um, as a web design agency, I mean, throughout the pandemic, we saw a massive influx of businesses going, oh my God, I need to get my business online or I need to improve my online presence. So there was actually a real drive, you know, you mentioned yourself about the pandemic and and we massively saw that. So it's it's one of those things that you shouldn't wait until there's a crisis to think, oh, I should now look at perfecting my online presence or even having one. You know, some businesses have relied without having a website at all. And I think that's fine, you know, but it's, you don't know what you don't know. You know, if you don't have a website and you're getting on fine, you might think you don't need one, but you don't know how much you're missing out on with all this potential online traffic who are going and searching for your services and are not finding your business. So as much as you may work well through word of mouth, if you're that type of company or recommendation, actually having a website as an online brochure into your business um, is vital. And obviously some for some businesses, a, a website is their business. You know, if you're an e-commerce store, everything you do is, is selling through your website. So I can't think of a single sector industry that would not have a need for a website. You know, in my opinion, if you are a business, you need a website. I would say that the purpose of a website over the last two, three years has changed. So as, you know, Claire, you run a web design agency, web build agency. What is the purpose of a website now to business? What does that mean? Well, it's your virtual shop from, you know, it, it, that is the way for people to come and see what you're all about and get to know your brand. So it's where they will find out information about what you have to offer. And a lot of the conversations we have with brands is around, you know, what are your USPs? What challenges are your customers facing? And we try and answer that through the website. So it's that opportunity to Put your company in front of other people and, and that might be people who know you and so they need to find out more or it could be people who don't know you but they have a need for your service or product and that's their only opportunity and way to find you because typically consumers are going straight to google straight online to search and you need to have a website to be found so it is that virtual shop front but obviously for some businesses it's a lot more so like i said with e-commerce it is their store it's we don't need to pay for a retail store anymore because we have the power of the internet and we're going to sell online. So yeah, it, it really does depend, but equally as well, I would look at it as anyone wanting to do a campaign, generate inquiries, generate leads, your website is most likely going to be the place that you will convert them. So if you're doing campaigns on other channels, social media, something like that, you want to drive that traffic to your website, there's the place they get to interact with your brand, they get to know more about your branding, they get to read more content about your product and service, and they have 
you know, hopefully, preferably multiple ways of getting in touch with you, you know, via a contact form, a phone number, an email address, or all these different touch points. So yeah, it, it really is that online space for people to find out more about you. And, and ultimately everyone is online. So you want your business to be online too. I know she's so seeing a lot of, you know, um, more growth in terms of the video sector and people introducing video to the website. What is your view on what is like a user-friendly website? Uh, I can talk actually from my own experience, first of all, how the reaction of my customers are whenever they are visiting my website. Because to be honest, whenever you have a website, you should look at it as a visit card because it's the first impression that people are getting from you. And um, here when actual video could come to help. And um, actually, let me start from the beginning, how I see a user-friendly website, because for me, it should be mobile compatibility. It should have a mobile compatibility. It should ha- be strategically planned uh, with the uh, uh, in in the place of the content and it should have a really good speed for the loading process and it should be really easy navigational so people can easily navigate and uh, get all the information they are looking for. And the video is an integral part of it because uh, you can look at video not as a as just the content, uh, but uh, as part of the design material as well. So. I wanted to uh, actually mention why video is so important um, as part of the website, because whenever um, your customers are visiting your website homepage, they are entering and seeing all this information. You can have a really good, let's say, design, very appealing with text, all the information included. Uh, But some people are so, let's say, busy nowadays to read all these texts. That's why they are looking easier version and easily method to, like, easy uh, to quickly understand what your website is about. So video could help here really, really, because they can enter, they can see one, one and a half minute video on your homepage, even on the cover, and get all information about your website and get interested to look more and learn more. And uh, these videos actually w- uh, that I'm talking not necessarily need to be uploaded in the cover, but can be some button there saying like, watch now, very appealing one so people could be interested to click on and watch your video and get informa- information what your what your company is about. So just to bring Claire back in, what does it mean to have a user-friendly website? So we know we've talked about websites. We know it's important. We know that everyone is now looking online. As Nush shared, it's all about first impressions and how you make that first impression. Your website is your storefront. It is you and your billboard saying, this is who we are and communicating that, that to your potential customers. But you know, what does having a user-friendly website mean for businesses? It's multiple things so you can look at it from a technical standpoint or from actually the the customer journey and customer experience so when we're talking about user friendly from a customer experience point of view we're making sure that aesthetically it's pleasing to look at you know if you're seeing clashing colors and things like that you're not having a good time navigation wise you can get where you want to easily you're not having to search around for the pages that you're trying to get to Device wise, like Anush mentioned, you know, whatever device you're viewing that website on, whether it be mobile or desktop, you're having a seamless experience and the website still works for you. And then, you know, coming down to what are you actually on that website to do, you know, this is where the kind of place where we see most businesses get it wrong is they've designed a nice site and we go, what what do you want people to do on this site? Oh, I want them to get in touch with me. And actually, the contact form is a little button hidden in the footer and they've at no point on the site said, this is what we want you to do on this site. You know, you do have to spell it out to people. So if they're there to shop, shop now, add to basket, you know, those are your calls to action. If they're there to, you know, for us, for example, we want people to contact us via like a website inquiry. So we've got like get a free web audit, you know, so really thinking about those calls to action so that you're navigating people through that journey on the site. Also thinking about user-friendly, we have to consider the technical side and Google and everything like that and how having a user-friendly site is going to impact your search rankings and everything else. And I'm sure that's something that we potentially will probably cover in more detail in, in 
future sessions. Um, but really thinking about now, you know, Google and other search engines, they will look at how user-friendly your site is as to how well you rank. And a lot of their metrics now are based around the user friendliness of the site as well. You know, when it comes down to things like site speed, all these things that, that all impacts the customer journey. And so I'm interested in money because obviously you do a lot of um, paid advertising campaigns and stuff like that with your clients and how important is the website to you when you're having those discussions with your clients The first thing we look at when we are talking to clients is the first thing I like to look at is the website because it's hard to tell a client to go spend £10,000 a month on Google ads or paid social media, which is all about driving quality traffic to the website. If the website is not desirable in terms of how it looks, it's not appealing. It doesn't have that great first impression. As Anush mentioned, you know, there isn't a full user flow in terms of those in great content for them to stay on site. It's not designed and optimized well from a mobile responsive point of view. You mentioned Google Call Web Vitals as a key element in terms of an audit we would do to make sure, you know, it falls with Google's guidelines. And if the website isn't up to scratch and I don't feel like that website is going to convert or there's not enough touch points on that website to co- complete a contact us form or a inquire now, or if it's e-commerce to, you know, that ease of getting the products to basket and completing that basket purchase, then we will go back to clients and say, you need to improve these things before you even spend any money on advertising because otherwise it's just a complete waste of money. And that's why, you know, well, that's what a website does. It's, it's the most important element without having that element resolved and fixed first. And obviously we rely on you guys to get that done. Um, it's making sure that, you know, I can't comfortably then go to a client saying, yes, you can go and then spend five, £10,000 a month for media spend to drive traffic to it. Because otherwise it's just a complete waste of money. Yeah. So I think it comes down to looking at what makes a great website, because I think that's the thing sometimes is people go, I've got a website, I built something on Wix, it's fine. I like it. Now, yeah, I want to go ahead and run these campaigns, whatever. And yeah, typically where the party poopers go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Just because you have a website, it's not often good enough, you know? So I think that's the challenge in, you know, we've, we've spoken about why, like why you need one, but then actually what makes a great one is, is the important part. Um, so, you know, yeah, Anush, from your perspective in terms of video, you know, I presume you would really encourage that every website look to have some kind of video on there to make it the best it could be. Uh, first of all, for me, actually, a good website is the one that connected with your company mission and whatever you are doing. Because, for example, if you are a design company, your website need to be really, let's say, stand out from the design point of view. If you're a content strategy company, your website need to have a really great content. So, It is the way to show actually uh, what you are doing. So people, whenever they are entering to your website, they can get first impression what they can get from you, which service you can provide them. Because, for example, in our website, we have put a lot of animations to show in the first, let's say, the first reaction of the customer so they can enter and see, oh, my God, okay, I can trust them because I see already with my eyes in their website page that they are doing animations. Uh, If I had just a simple website with no anything that can be related to my business, no one could be interested to work with me. Um, So that's actually my first let's say first point that I'm mentioning everyone, just make it connected to whatever you are doing. Show your mission, show your, let's say your goals in your website so people can quickly be interested to cooperate with you. Right. What about you, Manny? I think we we look at, it, I always look at it from, a, you know, what, certain elements like, you know, how good is the content? How easy is it to complete a lead form? How easy is it for customers to view and add products to basket? Um, I'm looking a lot of the Google Analytics side of things in terms of like the drop off the bounce rate to particular pages. How does that page look on a mobile perspective? So it's, it's looking at more of the, I'd say the technical elements from my perspective, because I'm always looking at in terms of, am I comfortable driving traffic to that? page does that page have a clear contact form at the top and clearly hit the usps in terms of content in terms of what it is we're telling them to complete that contact form for if it's b2b or any other formal service but also make sure that if we're driving them to a particular product landing page that you know that product has 
you know, easy click call to actions, add to baskets, buy now, and that that basket is easily accessible and that following that user flow. So for me, great elements of a website is making sure, A, the fully mobile responsive in line with the, you know, eat and see, you know, call web vital guidelines from Google. Um, and more importantly, making sure that, you know, if it's like lead gen, making sure that those contact forms and those conversion points on the website are very, very visible and easy to use and just a general good design to make it desirable because stuff like even things like reviews, Trustpilot, yeah. you know, give some authenticity to the website. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Having like customer validation help to kind of raise the profile of your brand by having yeah reviews and testimonials and you know on on the topic of what you're saying around the content and it being driven around your values I, mean, I kind of touched upon it earlier but an exercise we do so you know people should can take this away and go do it themselves um at trio is we say right this is the top 20 reasons exercise and you go five reasons why people will buy from you five reasons people won't five reasons people will come back and five reasons that they won't. And if you can answer those questions and then look at translating that into your website. So for example, if a reason that people don't buy from you is they think you're too expensive, well then let's put the pricing on the website and actually give them a price comparison to other competitors on the market. You know, so there's, there's so many different avenues you can take that's really going to come down to what it is that makes your company unique what your key selling points are. And then, yeah, absolutely, that that customer journey into conversion. You know, if, if you have an expectation of my website should be delivering revenue through contact form inquiries, then you need to make sure that that contact form is everywhere that people could find it. You know, don't expect people to go looking for how to get in touch with you. Make it really clear what you want them to do when they're on the site. I totally agree with Claire because I realized number one actually problem that a lot of website owners have, you can't find a way how to contact this, uh, this, this company because sometimes either they have different, let's say, contact information, different emails in other different pages, or you really can't get how to connect them if when you are interested. So this is number one thing, actually, whenever you are having all this information, have also clear way of people to understand how to contact you. I think that kind of really, really well sum summarizes the what and, you know, of the website. So thank you everyone for listening in. Um, do join us for our next series um, episode, which is all about the why of a website. And I'd like to thank Anush and Claire for joining us today. And we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks guys.